G'day Candy, hope you're doing well. So great question. The pros and cons of switching my tradie husband from a sole trader to a proprietary limited company. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a crash course. Now this will depend on the specifics of your situation, but hopefully it'll give you some benchmarks to consider so you can have a chat with your accountant or potentially look to get some new accounting and tax advice to help you make sure you've got the appropriate structure. Now, as a general rule of thumb, when we are in a particular structure, so in this case, a sole trader entity or for that matter, any other entity. Uh, we typically will wait until the end of the financial year in order to evaluate whether we are going to start new. The reason for this is that unless there's a really good compelling reason to start a new structure midway through the financial year, it is going to result in you having to basically pay for two lots of financial statements. So you're gonna have the sole trader, individual tax return and financial statements that are required for that business, and also the proprietary limited company if you started it now. Typically speaking, when we're working with our tax advisory team, we will usually wait until the end of a financial year or the 1st of July in order to start a new structure and transition, which ensures that you're not gonna get hit with double costs if we can avoid it. Now, for some people, there is a real compelling reason that we do so. They've had a big spike in revenue, they've got a uh, more profits, they've landed a particular contract that requires them to have a company structure, and therefore we just have to bite the bullet. But if we can avoid it, then we typically try to. Now, a sole trader is used by many small smaller businesses, typically under a couple hundred grand a year, because it's simple, right? Um, if you are a, a sole practitioner, uh, you're running a trade business and you're working for yourself, even if you've got some people, uh, you can run a sole trader business and you can employ people, you cannot employ yourself, you cannot go on wages as an individual. Now, the main tipping point for individuals to move into a proprietary limited company is basically two things. The first one is that you expect that your profits are going to exceed around about $200,000 a year. Um, I think probably a little bit less, maybe about 150 is about that tip over point, but to be safe, we typically say about 200,000. The reason for this is that at this point, having a proprietary limited company will typically provide you with a lower tax rate, assuming that you retain some of those profits in the company. The thing about a sole trader business is that you have to take all of, or your husband needs to take all of the profits for himself each and every single year. There's very little tax planning that can be done above and beyond uh, investing into more stock or things that can be deductions from the business. But once again, why rack up expenses to save tax? You're only getting back kind of circa 30 cents in the dollar or two, contributing more money to superannuation. And, and obviously keeping in mind that when we put money into super, you're not gonna be able to touch it until you're at least 60. So in a proprietary limited company, you have the ability to retain profits in that business at 25% tax. You have the ability to then choose whether you do distributions by way of a profit, or you can also take loans from the business. Now, I've recorded videos on Division 7A. There are some considerations that need to be made to ensure that you get benefits from that strategy, and you're not just using it to try and kick the tax tin down the road. The second big consideration here is really uh, protection, right? The idea of a proprietary limited company is that you have limited liability uh, as being a shareholder and a director of that company, and, and therefore you can have an extra layer of protection and you can isolate risk that that business has in that particular entity. This is particularly important for some tradespeople. Um, of course, you've got insurances and things like that, I suspect. Um, however, uh, if you own assets in your own name and you're running a sole trader business, it's very, very easy for people to litigate you as an individual, uh, whereas in a proprietary limited company, we can isolate that risk. And obviously, we wanna try and do a good job, but things go out of, uh, get out of hand, some things are outside of our control, and therefore, if we can minimize that risk, then that works uh, in our favor as well. So those are really the kind of two key tipping points. It's really important that you've got a good proactive accountant. A good accountant should be throughout the year having the conversation with you to say, hey, we're accruing these profits. You're on this particular growth trajectory. Um, this is when I think we need to adjust our tax structure. Um, this is one of our 40 strategies that we have as part of our financial performance scorecard. So it's worthwhile jumping in my bio and, and going through that scorecard. And it'll not only give you some insights around when you should be reviewing your tax structure, but also making sure that there's other opportunities that you could be op optimizing your profit, your cash, and your personal wealth, uh, that you don't leave those stones unturned. So uh, go check that out. I hope this has been helpful. If you've got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. Catch you soon.